Hey, Game Makers! I've talked before about my love of characters and their interactions with each other. So today we're going to look at a fun and major pain in the butt way of having our characters talk to each other. Welcome to Party Chat. I'll be talking about making a Party Chat setup similar to the Bravely games, where when one is available, a notification will pop up, you press a button, and view a cutscene where cute little moa heads talk to each other via speech bubbles. I've also heard the Tales of series utilizes a Party Chat system, so if you're looking for something similar to that, this might push you in the right direction. Now, there are a few different ways I found in MV to do this. I'm going to be showing you the easy, organized, and less work approach, and I'll briefly go over another similar method to achieve the same idea at the end. First off, we'll need the Galv Message Styles plugin. This will let us create floating message windows with message balloon tails, so we can point them towards our cute talking heads. We're kind of going for a comic book feel with this example. First, let's briefly cover the parameters. Input indicator refers to the location of the default the text is finished you can continue now icon. It defaults to the center, so you can adjust the numbers if you choose to move it anywhere else. Again, indicator zoom adjusts how big the message indicators are. Bigger numbers means bigger arrows. Message padding is how close the edges of the message window are to the text. Message window skin. The default is window. To add more, simply place the new window skin files in your game's image slash system folder and type its name here. Arrow graphic is the name of the arrow's graphic that will be used to point to our pictures. Again, this needs to be in our game's image slash system folder. I'll be linking to this plugin's download page in the description, where you can also find a demo containing any files you need, so make sure to check that out. Window skin back opacity is how see-through you want the window. Zero is totally see-through and 255 is not see-through in the slightest. Why offset? This one is actually important to our example. This is how far away the message window will appear from the event it's linked to. The default, 60, is probably fine for its basic use. But as we're using this specifically for our little party chat system, I'll actually be setting this to 200, which is a little bit bigger than my talking head pictures in height. I'll get to why this is important shortly, but for now, font is the font the message windows will use, leave it blank to use the default font, or type in the font of your choosing. For us, we'll be using the good old Icky Comic Sans, because why not? Font outlines turns the font outline on or off based on true or false, and font size is the font size! I'll be using one other plugin, but it's purely for this example. I call it Save Image. It's actually a modification me and my programmer did based on Orange's Save Screenshot plugin. So super awesome credits for creating the original. What this modification does is allow you to use the script call save image dot save screenshot bracket bracket semicolon. To save a PNG file of the game screen under your game's image slash pictures file to create a picture usable with the show picture commands. Again, there will be a download link in the description. Now, let's get to actually making this, shall we? First, we'll need an event on parallel on the map we want our party chat to be available on. So say, walk into a tent, get a party chat, or whatever our conditions may be. In the event, we're going to use a show picture command to show our party chat alert image. For this example, this will be picture number two, but yours can be anything you wish. The image I'm using here is the height and width of my game screen. In this case, the default 816 by 624. It simply says party chat in the bottom left hand corner. We could choose to make this a more specified size and place it with the direct designation coordinates, but this should suffice for our example. Then click OK. Next, we'll have a conditional branch. On the fourth page, select button and select the desired activation button. We're using page up, but you're welcome to use whatever you wish. Click OK. Inside the branch, we'll start by erasing the picture we just showed. In our case, picture number two, as our party chat was activated now, and it no longer needs to be on the screen. We're also going to gather our followers, though this isn't necessary, it's purely an aesthetic thing. Now, if you're using the save image plugin I mentioned earlier, you'll want to do a script call. Go to page three of the event commands and click script. Again, the script call here is Save image dot save screenshot bracket bracket semicolon. We're also going to put a short wait command after it to make sure the new saved image actually works and takes effect. Next, we'll be turning on a switch. We'll call it Party Chat 1. We'll need to use a new switch for every party chat. Next, we'll use control variables to memorize our player's map ID, X, and Y coordinates. So make sure to create a player X, player Y, and map ID variable and set them. And now, we show the screenshot we took. It will be named Screenshot. Keep in mind, if you're using this, you'll want to either go into the game and call a screenshot first to make it appear in your image folder, or put in a dummy image named Screenshot for the sake of selecting it here the first time. 
If you're just using a standard image, or some other form of background, it'd likely be best to put it here. For this example, our screenshot background will be picture number 30. Yours can be whichever number you choose. Mine is simply high, as I normally use previous image numbers elsewhere. Next, we'll want to set self switch A on, and teleport the player to a party chat map. For our means, we're also going to have the transfers fade set to none, so the screen doesn't fade at all. Lastly, for this event, we'll create a new event page with the condition set to self switch A. Additionally, if you're creating these based on plot points, you might want to create another blank page to be accessed via a plot switch or variable on the case of the player not viewing the scene and coming back to the area later in the game. We'll also likely want to erase our party chat notification picture on any transfers leaving the map. Next, to the party chat map! We'll want to create a map solely for our party chats to appear on. We're doing this for several reasons. A, to keep all of our party chat events together, and B, so we can utilize Galv's message styles plugin that's used by hovering over events. Now this can be done successfully in many different ways, but we'll be using this way here, as out of the many different ideas I've tried, this just seemed to work the best overall. In terms of size, I'd recommend just making this map the size of your game screen. To put that into perspective, I'm using the default screen size of 816 by 624 here, and my map is 17 by 13. First thing we'll want to do is create four events. Specifically, event 1 should be somewhere in the top left corner, event 2 should be in the top right, event 3 should be the lower left, and event 4 should be the lower right. The actual placement of these is dependent on your cute talking head size, screen size, and the Y offset of the message box. For this example, my faces are 144 by 144, the size of the default individual face graphics. They'll be placed at each corner of the screen, and my Y offset, as mentioned, is set to 200. If you're not using the exact dimensions here, have more or less characters, or what have you, it's really just a case of resizing things, changing numbers, and moving the events around until you find something that you like. Now, our fifth event. Create a new event, separate from the first four. This will contain our actual party chat scene. We'll want it on auto run, and the condition set to the party chat number switch we set in our original event. In this case, party chat 1. In the event commands, to start, we're going to create a quick little transition intro to our scene. Here, you can do what you please. In our example, we'll be using the tint picture command to tint our screenshot slash background image, that is, our picture number 30, to dark, and 20 frames to have it wait that long. Next, we'll show our Moe Blob faces. To keep this simple, it's a good idea to have these numbered with some variant of 1, 2, 3, and 4. In our case, we'll be using pictures 31, 32, 33, and 34 for our character heads. You'll also want to make sure these are higher numbers than your background image. First off, quick note, we'll be fading our characters in, so our show pictures will all be set with the opacity 0, so they don't actually appear until we're ready for them. Now the fun stuff! Head placement! Direct designation X and Y. Now these are highly dependent on your screen size and where you actually want your talking heads, but we'll go over a simple way to place our Moe heads in the corners of the screen. Our first character in the scene will be Akira. We'll be placing her at 0, 0, so the top left corner. Our second character, Kachi, will be placed at the top right of the screen. We'll also want her to be flipped, as all of the faces we're using here are facing right. We'll want her facing left, looking towards her friends. To make her flip, we simply need to go to Scale, and set the width to negative 100%. To stick her in the top right, we'll want to set her X coordinate to 816. This is the width of our game screen. Because she's flipped, she'll essentially be drawn from the upper right instead of the upper left. Thus, we'll want her at 816, so the end of the screen. Y can be 0, since she's at the top. Again, we'll be having our opacity set to 0 as well. Character 3 will be Tadase. He gets to go in the lower left corner. So he doesn't need to be flipped since his cute little face is already facing the right. Here's where we get to math! Tadase's graphic is 144 by 144. Our game screen's height is 624. So we'll take 624 minus 144 to push it up that many pixels. And thus, let's set the Y coordinates to 480, and the X coordinate to 0, since we're not pushing them out at all. Again, opacity 0. So by now we have where character 4, Terra, is going to be. She's on the right, so we'll flip her. That means her X coordinate needs to be 816, she's at the bottom, so our Y needs to be 480, opacity 0, and that was a lot of numbers. So that was pictures 31, 32, 33, and 34. Now, as we're fading these in, 
we'll use move picture for each picture, making sure to set the correct picture number, coordinates, the scale flipped width, and most importantly, setting the opacity to 255. We're going to do this all in 20 frames, and have wait for completion only set on the last one shown, in our case, character 4, so that they all start at the same time and finish showing at the same time. Don't worry, we're doing good. We actually get to the scene now! The code for having the message window show up above the event is backslash pop, square bracket, the event ID number, other square bracket. So when character 1 talks, it's pop 1, character 2 is pop 2, and so on. If you want to change the face shown at any point, it's easiest to just copy the original show picture command, change the face picture, and remember to set the opacity to 255. For this example, I also have 10 frame wait commands between each of the new character's text boxes. This is purely to force it to show the message box's opening animation each time a new character starts talking. At the end of the scene, we're going to take all those move picture commands from up top, paste them at the bottom, and change all their opacities to zero so our faces fade out this time. Again, you can use any sort of transition you wish, like having them scroll into the screen or whatever you really want. We'll want to turn on self-switch A and create a new blank page with the condition set to self-switch A. This will prevent it from replaying when coming back to the map for other party chats. Remember when we set our map ID, player X and Y coordinates before we transferred to this map? Now we get to use them. Let's go to transfer player and set the designation with variables to our map ID variable, player X variable, and player Y variables in that order. We're also going to set the fade to none here for the specific effect we're going for. After the transfer, we'll move picture 30, our screenshot or background picture, and set the opacity to zero. Lastly, for good measure, erase all the pictures we've used as to not cause any accidental issues in the future. And that's it. You get a party chat click me click me notification, go to the party chat map, have some talking heads, and return. That's all there is to it. Now, if you wanted to be more specific with the message locations, message arrows, having them shown directly on the current map, or what have you, I'd advise checking out Yonfly's message core and message extension plugins. While they require a lot more code and specifications, they would allow you to do a lot more. But that's an entire tutorial onto itself. Thank you for watching, and if you have any tutorial requests, feel free to ask me in the comments. Until next time, see you later, gamers!